Hello learners in this video we shall revise act 3 scene 2 of the play The Merchant of Venice by William Shakespeare The scene opens in Belmont where Bassanio has gone to choose the right casket so that he could marry Portia Portia asked Bassanio to delay before he chooses one of the caskets as she fears if Bassanio chooses the wrong casket she will lose him forever She asks him to tarry and pause a day or two. She says that something tells her that she would not lose Bassanio, but it is not love and it can't be hate either as hate doesn't counsel in such a quality. She curses Bassanio's eyes as they have overlooked and divided her. She calls time naughty as it puts bar between the owners and their rights. She says that she speaks too long only to piece the time, ek it and to draw it out in length and to stay Bassanio from choosing. On the other hand, Bassanio does not want to wait as he feels tortured unless he makes his choice. Now, Bassanio goes to make the choice. A background music is being played that fancy is sometimes bred in the heart and is sometimes bred in the head. The words seem to warn him not to judge by external appearance. At this point, Portia brings a few comparison. She says that if Bassanio chooses the wrong casket, he would make a swan like end. The comparison is appropriate as Portia's eyes would serve as the stream and watery deathbed for Bassanio. Again, if Bassanio chooses the right casket, the music would be like the flourish when true subjects bow to a new crowned monarch. It can also be compared to those dulcet sounds at the break of day that creep into the dreaming bridegroom's ear, summoning him to marriage. Portia makes more comparison when Bassanio finally goes to face the challenge. She compares Bassanio to young Alcides, that is Hercules, when he did redeem the virgin tribute paid by howling troy to the sea monster she compares herself to the chosen princess awaiting death and the other people standing by are like the chosen wives who have come forth to view the outcome with bleared visages next bassanio makes his choice bassanio surveys the caskets reads their inscriptions and decides that he would not go by appearance as the world is still deceived with ornament and appearance can be deceptive he brings instances from law and religion to prove his point he says that in law tainted and corrupt pleas can obscure the show of evil with a gracious voice in religion A damned error can hide its grossness with a nice show of a blessing and some scripture to justify it. He says that every vice has some outward appearance of virtue. Next Bassanio cites example of cowards whose hearts are all as false as stairs of sand, but they wear beards like brave Hercules and Mars the god of war, even though their livers are as white as milk. They assume the valor's excrement to render them read out it. Bassanio speaks about beauty. He says that beauty can be bought by the pound in the form of cosmetics, which works miracles on nature, making the women that wear the most of it the most beautiful. The crisp snakes' golden locks, which are uh, tossed in the wind so nicely and seem beautiful, often turn out to be a wig made from a dead person's hair. He adds. that appearances are like an inviting guild shows that leads to a dangerous sea or like the beauteous scarf veiling an indian beauty in short appearances can entrap the wisest thus basanio discards the gaudy gold calling it the heart food for midas he discards the silver casket saying that it is a pale and common drudge between man and man Finally he chooses the meager lead as it threatens rather than promising anything its paleness moves him more than eloquence Bassanio's choice is made Portia prays in for help in containing her emotions Bassanio opens the lead casket and finds in it a picture of Portia which though beautifully painted fails to do her justice
Bassanio describes Portia's counterfeit. He says that some demigod might have created such a beautiful picture. He feels that the eyes in this picture were in motion. The severed lips were parted with sugar breath. Seeing the hair in the portrait, Bassanio says that the painter has played the role of a spider and has woven a golden mesh to entrap the hearts of men faster than gnats in cobwebs. He says that the painter could not complete the eyes as they were so dazzling that they stole both his eyesight and thus he left it unfurnished. Bassanio finds a scroll along with Portia's portrait. The contents of the scroll are, as he chose not by the view, his chance is fair and choice is true. Since this fortune falls to him, he should be content and should not seek new. If he is well pleased with this and holds his fortune for his bliss, he should claim the lady with a loving kiss. Bassani is overwhelmed with joy and feels giddy in spirit. He compares himself with one who has competed for a prize and thinks that everyone's applause and shouts are for his success but isn't quite sure because he's so stunned and isn't certain whether all these praises are for him or not. Oshia wishes to stand high in Bassanio's account. She wishes to be treble twenty times better than herself, a thousand times fairer than she is, ten thousand times richer than she is. Oshia commits herself, her fair mansion, and all her servants to Bassanio along with the ring to keep forever. Bassanio replies that Oshia has bereft him of all words and only his blood speaks to him in his veins. He says that he is as dumbfounded as a buzzing crowd after some oration fairly spoken by a beloved prince. He promises to never part with the ring and if the ring ever parts from his finger, Portia should consider him dead. Next, Nerissa and Graciano congratulate the lovers and announce that they also have made a match and ask permission to be married at the wedding ceremony of Bassanio and Portia. At this point, Lorenzo, Jessica and Salario arrive. Salario says that he has come with a letter from Antonio and that he met Lorenzo and Jessica whom he persuaded to come with him. As Portia welcomes them all, Bassanio opens Antonio's letter. He reads it and Portia notices that he has turned pale and understands that the letter contains bad news. She begs him to share the cause of his anguish. Bassanio tells her that he has just read the unpleasantest words that ever blotted paper had. He confesses that he is deeply in debt to a dear friend, who in turn is in debt to a dangerous enemy. He compares the letter to Antonio's body and every word in it to a gaping wound issuing lifeblood. He asks Salario if not a single ship from Tripolis, Mexico, England, Lisbon, Burberry or India escape the dreadful rocks. Salario replies, not a single ship has returned. Moreover, it appears that even if Antonio had the present money to discharge the Jew, he would not take it. He says that he has never known a creature that did bear the shape of a man so keen and greedy to confound a man. He also informs that how Shylock plies the Duke morning and night, saying that if he denied justice, it would impeach the freedom of the state. Twenty merchants, the Duke himself and the Magnificos of the greatest port have all persuaded with Shylock, but none is able to drive him from the envious plea of his forfeiture, justice and his bond. At this point, Jessica informs that she has heard her father Shylock swear to his fellow Jews, Tubal and Chas, that he would rather have Antonio's flesh than 20 times the amount of money Antonio owes him. And Jessica is sure that he will take the flesh of poor Antonio if the power and authority of the law allow him to. Portia asks Bassanio to pay Shylock 6,000 ducats and deface the bond. If necessary, Bassanio may double 6,000 and triple it before allowing such a close friend to lose even a hair on account of Bassanio. She asks Bassanio to first go with her to the church and marry her. Once the marriage is solemnized, he should go to Venice to help his friend. 
but before all this she wants to hear the letter Bassanio reads the letter in the letter Antonio has mentioned that his ships have been wrecked his creditors have become cruel he cannot pay the due back and since once the Jew takes the flesh from him Antonio will die all Bassanio's debts to him are cleared his only wish is to see Bassanio before he dies if his love for Antonio is not enough to make Bassanio come to him his letter should not either the scene ends with Bassanio promising to return soon and not to rest at all until they are united. That brings us to the end of the video. I hope the video was helpful. Stay tuned for more such videos. Thank you so much for watching.